think the main problem is that people have difficulty identifying expertise, identifying who is and is not an expert. And so um, the mismatch between um, people's desire to find experts and to uh, extract knowledge from them is not well paired in this environment where it's very difficult for people when there's many different voices talking and saying many different things to identify who is and isn't an expert and where to actually gain the expertise that they're looking for. There's so much information out there now and um, it comes from so many different places but you know I like to know who I'm talking to <laughs> and um, um, what they value. Social media, you can, you have a certain amount of uh, anonymity and uh, I'm not too trusting of that. <laughs> Access to so much information within that, that environment, it becomes more difficult to figure out who to listen to and who might actually have the, uh, the authority to make judgments rather than the ability just to have an opinion about something. And I think that's a really critical difference that I talk about with my students particularly graduate students who are training to be experts in, in my field, I tell them, you, you, you're going to have you're going to make judgments. You're not going to have opinions in the, in the same way. I mean, there's a difference between making a judgment and having an opinion. I have an opinion about what's wrong with my car. A mechanic can make a judgment <laughs> about what's wrong with my car. And that's what expertise offers you. Information is so easily accessible. It is easier for people to gain that access. And I think at times they then devalue expertise if they can find those answers for themselves. I think it's hard um, to be considered an expert in the current media environment because if someone doesn't like what you have to say, they will simply reply with an article that it completely contradicts you, even if it's not based in fact. And even if you point out that that's not a reputable news source or that's not how things actually went, the fact that they can go on Google and get the answer they want, even if it's not reality, makes it hard for truth to be discerned. People have a tendency when they encounter information that is counter to their own previous worldview, or often reject those notions out of hand, and that bias then uh, can filter the type of information people let in. And so people then will have a tendency to let in information that uh, might be quite biased, but is more uh, commensurate with their own worldview than other sources of information, which in fact may be more factual or maybe more truthful. People who write books are people who believe strongly in the information or the position that they are exploring. Um, but again, we always leave things out. And what is left out in anything uh, tells you a lot about what the producer or creator um, is pushing for. So it's always there. Um, we're only human. We only have so much time to read and research and balance things um, but I think if we are at the very very least aware uh, that bias is unavoidable um, I think that's a really really good start now whether that's enough I'm not sure uh, but without that knowledge then again we really are just at the mercy of whatever information or source or person comes along and tries to sell us something. Who is, who is doing the talking? Can you see their, their identity in the way they present the information, uh, the way they make arguments? But you also have to be careful about that. You can't dismiss people's arguments just because, oh, well, that person has this political leaning or has this gender or, or you know, th th this particular perspective doesn't invalidate their argument. Um, so you need to be on, aware I think of bias, but you also can't, you, you can't just assume that everyone is biased, which is, you know, which I also see among students and other people. They just won't believe anything. Well, that's, you know, that, that I think is an, another kind of abdication of the hard work of, of sifting and thinking about the information. And so I think one of the most important things that people uh, can learn is how to 
uh, suppress their own biases enough in order to uh, get a nice sampling of different uh, points of view, especially ones that, as was mentioned before, are quite are, are, are more trustworthy and more accountable to um, getting things incorrect. Um, and so the more that people can control their own biases and understand their own biases, the more that they can correct for them uh, in the information that they allow themselves to digest. Clearly, um, if I find myself agreeing and nodding along to everything that I'm hearing or reading, then there's a bias. And consequently, if I find myself wanting to throw something at the television set, I realize there's a bias there too. So for me, what I try to do is hear something from multiple points of view and see if at the end the facts are the same. I would advise people to look for multiple sources and to see if they can glean the same story or facts from different points of view. When consuming news, look outside of American media and see what the spin from a BBC or The Guardian or a different news source, just, just to see what the take on it is and if it delivers the same content differently. Having a PhD in history, does not mean that you're infallible, <laughs> that, that you know everything there is to know about history and that your judgments are sound or reliable. They, they may not be. Um, so I, I think you have to balance the idea, well, does this person have credentials? Um, are they an expert in the field? With a, a judgment of the work itself, when I'm looking at an information source, what, what, what is the quality of the work? What, what are the sources? How do they talk about the, the ways they came to the judgment? the way they arrived at the conclusions that they come to. I think that's important and you only you can develop that only really over time. I like to know uh, why people are involved in something. You know, what do they bring to an issue or a situation? You know, um, if I believe uh, that there is some bias there for whatever reason and we all uh, have our biases, but I like to know what they are. <laughs> then that helps me make a judgment about whether I trust uh, the information that I'm getting. Medic um, cognition comes in that you, you need to think about the way you're thinking about things. And you need to do things like examine yourself for bias and, and so forth, but that's a, a, a constant process that you, you need to think, oh no, I've, I've transcended bias, I'm an expert now, I don't need to worry about them. No, that's that's every day, every moment that you're, you need to be thinking about those things.